welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. The name is Joie Beni. Um, So I just want to say actually that I got, I reached my first 100 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Like that made me really happy. So thank you guys so much for, I hope this is straight. Anyways. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey. I do hope you stay and enjoy it and love every bit of it. I hope you come and you go back renewed, changed, transformed. I am simply here today to share with you guys my 2017 story and very specifically about having an attitude of gratitude because honey, 2020 has been a very hard year and yes, I mean globally it has been, um, there's been a lot going on in every single country, but personally too, it's been very hard and I spoke to a friend a few days ago and I knew I was not alone, so even in this place of confusion and broken brokenness or despair that I might be in emotionally, I know God can still use me, so I'm willing to be used by him now to be his vessel right now to encourage you guys because I don't know, I don't want to be stuck in my own life thinking I'm the only one because there could be many of you out there and today if you need a word, you're at the right place. So, I keep having to check this. <laughs> so, my story, this is how it goes. So in 2017, I had just graduated from high school the year before and I, you know, thought I was gonna go straight to um, university like a normal human being, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me started on the societal pressures, by the way, but today's not a conversation for that. But society says, you know, graduate from high school, go straight to university, get married after, have babies, build your house somewhere before. It's a lot, it really is a lot, but today's not the conversation for that. So, yeah, um, you know, I thought I would have. Unfortunately, I couldn't for financial reasons and I wasn't a citizen then, so yeah, I just couldn't start away, straight away. Um, I did have to do a bridging course though. That was free, so I did that. But after then, I couldn't really study. So there was like three years of me being stuck in limbo, just being home, not, not doing much. Also, didn't have, I, I was really struggling to, to get a job, which I understand, I'm young. Um, you might be thinking, why do you need a job when you're like, how old is I? 18, 19. Which is fair enough, but I wasn't living for myself. I was living for my society. And society said, you must have a job, honey. And I just felt the pressures just because everybody around me did. And it's the normal thing to do. It's the normal thing to do in Australia, you know. Even younger people, you know, start working and stuff. So if you're not doing anything, what are you doing? You know, I felt um, very lost. Uh, couldn't work, couldn't study, <laughs> couldn't do anything really. Um, yeah, so I felt really lost uh, around that time. Also, there was a lot of comparison going on, honey. We're gonna talk about that one day. But yeah, there was a lot of like comparing going on as well. I just felt like everybody around me was doing so much better than me. Everybody around me was like really progressing in life, which they were actually. That is the honest truth. They were. <laughs> and I was just stuck, stagnant in this weird place emotionally and like physically, you know. It was a tough time to be um, emotional. I guess when you're younger, you expect things to just happen for you. Um, your expectations of the world are so high and life doesn't hit you until life hits you when you're like uh, I don't want to say a little bit older because everybody's life is different everybody everybody has gone through different you know situations in life so no I'm not gonna say when you're older that you start to experience life but I'll say when you do come across those experiences but by then no I didn't I was a very sheltered girl very privileged I still think I'm privileged today so every time a new I year would come I would always tell myself that this year this is going to be the year man this is going to be my year I will change I will flourish I will bloom honey and I guess that's all about expectations you know building up those expectations what does that mean what does my year 
really mean? What does it mean that I'm gonna bloom and I'm gonna flourish and all of these blessings will overflow upon my life? That's how I looked at it. And to be honest, that's expectation people put at the beginning of every single year. These are my goals for the year. I will be blessed this year. It's a really positive outlook on life, but you do have to define those terms that you're, you know, going going with, you know. What does my year really mean? So I had to redefine what my year meant because in 2017, my year meant I will finally get that job. I will finally be able to study and finally, you know, complete this degree. I will finally flourish in life. I will finally feel like myself again. I will finally not be depressed ever again. I will be joyful. I will own back my joy, reclaim my joy is the word. But I realized very quickly that that's not what my year should at least mean. My year, you know, subjective, depending on the person, yes, but um, overall, things need to change because I, I decided that things needed to change because, you know, like I told you, that's what I thought my year meant. But in that year, it was probably the best year growth wise for me. Although I feel like 22 is topping that up, <laughs> 22 is doing amazing things inside, but <laughs> but you know, I I was the most broken though in 2017, yet I still left that year feeling like I did flourish, I did bloom, I did bloom this year. Not in the way that I expected to, but in the way that I needed to, in the way that my soul needed to flourish. So let's redefine joy as well, because I thought that will be my most joyful year yet or at least every single year that that passed except this year you know i thought this we want this we are a joyful year yet and if you, look, <laughs> if you look at the definition of joy it's it's yes you know the state of happiness and stuff but it's deeper than that it's it's not happiness based on 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 circumstance you know it, it's happiness that goes beyond circumstance it means no matter what circumstance I am in, I am joyful because my joy is not grounded on these blessings that I have. So when these blessings go away, I am still joy. I'm still joyful. I'm still me. Um, so yeah, I, I had to redefine joy and I had to redefine what my year meant so that I walk into and step into each year after that with a different attitude and a different mindset. And that's really my message today, part of it, <laughs> my message today. Um, I don't know what expectations you had for 2020. I really don't. I don't know what you, you told yourself this year, what you expected this year to be, but I just hope you're, you're redefining those terms now. What does blessings really look like, you know? Because that year I learned a lot of what joy meant and learning something new it's a blessing being exposed to something new and different about yourself is a blessing you know learning to love yourself differently is a blessing all of those things are a blessing and fa the fact that we're still alive blessing <laughs> you know there we go so um as long as you're redefining those terms and what they mean so that you walk in i'm not saying expectations are not good i'm saying Remember that your life is not in your hands, you know, your life is in whose hands? God's hands. So at the end of the day, although it's, it's really positive to go into a year with a positive mindset, you can do that, but don't make, what's the word? Don't, don't try to hold the pen. Don't try to write the story of how the year will pan out exactly, because no matter what, when the year ends, you're going to get exactly what your soul needs, 100%. So I say this all to say that 2020 has been rough, you know, like all of the things that have been affecting people globally may have then translated into our personal lives and then affected us personally too. I don't know, but I, I, I do want to look at having an attitude of gratitude as well because my 
I've been really struggling to just like be happy, you know, like just um, I'm not saying this so you can feel bad for me, but like genuinely I've been really struggling to like just just be happy. So I decided to come up with a new life routine, right? Every morning when I wake up, I write down at least three things I'm grateful for today. And if I can't think of it then, when the, when the day ends, think about what you are grateful for in that day. What about today made it so special? What did you learn in this day? And it's, it's been a very eye-opening experience because I think it's shifted my mindset to even in this place from sadness, despair, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is for you, there is still something to be grateful for. So I, you know, if you guys want to join me on the challenge, <laughs> Do that in your own personal lives. Write down every single morning. I am grateful for this. I am grateful for this. It could be whatever. But also look inside your heart. What are you grateful? What are, what are the lessons you're grateful that you've learned? You know. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, we stop thinking. So yeah. Um, also down in the comments, guys. If there is anything that you that you're grateful for and like willing to share in the comments publicly please let's start that train what are you grateful for i am grateful for dot 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 because even in this horrible year that it's been for the world for your world personally there is still something to be grateful for and I do want to leave you with this word that you know your life life might be hard right now and, and you, I don't know my heart is really heavy I don't know what you guys could be experiencing I don't know um, I don't know what's in your head but you are special you are valued you are loved you are appreciated I listened to a song this week and in the lyrics of the song it said there is nothing that you can do to make God love you more and there is nothing that you have done that will make him close that door and the reason why I really love that because is because it means you are already you are already loved beyond measure just like this just the way that you are already loved beyond measure and accepted by God yes you still have to do the work within yourself to be better than you were yesterday but today God says there is nothing that you can do to make me love you more because I really love you to that capacity and more <sighs> love you guys and you know God loves you more I am praying for you guys you are my heart Thank you guys.